<laughs> Some things to kind of keep in mind as you rotate today. This is going to be your group that you will be with for the whole day. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys already are like We're with you. <laughs> even our, our our audio and video guys will go with you today. So <laughs> I want you guys to think of yourselves as a family today. And in a family, there's sometimes some interesting dynamics. Mm -hmm. as, as Denver says, there's the crazy uncle or the crazy aunt or the one who puts the cloves in the something. <laughs> I can't even remember. But, but, um, but as a family, I want you guys to hold each other accountable through the whole day. Um, there will be, there will probably be people in your family, in this group, who like to talk a lot. There will be people who don't like to talk hardly at all. And so, come on in, Pishnacks. Make room for Pishnacks. Um, you know what, if we, if this group will slide down, we can pull a chair up here and then we'll have two here. And if you wanna come over here, over here would be great. But if we pull, pull that chair up here next to you, Glenn, and then slide down, and then we'll have two chairs on the end for Pishnix. Uh, are they in this group? I don't know where we can find more chairs. I'm I'm going to send Glenn out to try and track down a few more chairs. Glenn, is that cool? Okay. Okay, we've still got two more here, it looks like. So hopefully we'll be okay. But if we could get a couple more, that would be good. Um today we're going to have we started? Yeah, we're good. Okay. In my Every group is going to be a little bit, every presentation you go to is going to be a little bit different today. They might need to get more chairs for your folks. Come on in. We're trying to make more room. Let's give them our, there's two. Two here, and there's two more up here. Okay, cool. Um, we will be talking about the answer to prayer for covenant today and specifically about love and about our hearts. Um, in my group today, we are going to be having a discussion. I am not going to stand up here and teach you. We are going to teach each other. And so I am going to ask that you be very actively active participants today. Um, if you have a tendency to talk a lot, please be self-aware and control the impulse to talk a lot. I still want to hear from you, but let's control that impulse. If you have a tendency to not speak, I would like you to try and speak. Let loose that impulse. Yeah. Come on in. We're trying we're trying to find more chairs, but come on in. We have one over here. There's scouting for more chairs. Okay. There's some just in the dining hall next to us. Okay, so, thanks love. Um, until we get more chairs in, just, you know, sit against the wall or whatever and, and we'll get more chairs in. Awesome. Okay, today, let's introduce our topic. It's taken from TNC 157, verses 52 and 53. So if you have your scriptures, you can pull them out, or your co the covenant, or what more you can listen. I'm just going to read part of it. I know. 52. The very, very end of 52, the very last line. Please, as you're setting up the chairs, please scoot them up because this is active. I want you to close. 157, verse 52. Let not your hearts remain divided from one another and divided from me. Be of one heart and regard one another with charity. 
That's what we're going to talk about today. Now I want to point out one thing before we get started. Do you like my t-shirt? <laughs> Does anybody know Spanish? Does anybody know what Alma Diabolica means? Devilish soul. Devilish soul. Devilish soul. We have a tendency to look outward and to look at each other and to see the devilish soul in everybody else. All the problems with everybody else. And I would hope that today, as you go through these classes, that you would start to be very, very internal and to recognize that what's in you might be where the devilish soul is. This is me, this is the devilish soul in me. I am not, I, I really don't have a whole lot to offer you guys, really. I have a devilish soul. I admit that I do. I, there's still so much to learn. So, um, so let's learn it together. So group discussion today, okay guys? Let's look at these, these words. What do we learn? What do we learn right off the bat when we read this? Let not your hearts remain divided from one another and divided from me. What do we know right off the bat? We're divided. We are divided. Which means we're divided. Yes. We are divided from each other and we are divided from God. Period. There, there's not a question there. Anybody usually speak that loud? Yep. Yeah. Can you speak that so we can hear you? Yeah. When you speak, make sure you speak loudly. We do have a large room. Gosh, I hope we're not going to have that many people in here. <laughs> Be of one heart and regard one another with charity. What do we know? We're not very charitable. It's easier said than done. Absolutely. So. So, time out. Is what? Oh, what was it, you guys? 52 and 53, the very end of 52. Okay, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? I think part of this is just part of becoming an adult because life itself is hard. And as, we're, as we become adults, we create these walls to say, okay, I understand that I don't need to think there because I'm focused here. And we create these boundaries that makes sense to us. And so we stop thinking about a lot of things until we run up against somebody who has different boundaries. And there we have problems. And different ideas. Yeah. Well, how is it that the world is constructed? Well, they think it's different. They must be bad because they're not me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we run into. Somebody said to me, um, Two days ago, I was having a conversation with somebody who um, who reads a, a lot of really good self-help books, and she said to me, you know, that she had just read a book. Um, I think it was called "You're Wrong." Being, Being wrong. wrong. And the whole premise of the book is that you, we all are pretty much wrong all the time. <laughs> all the time, we're wrong, and yet. Who feels like they're wrong? Like, I, I've got it all figured out. I'm doing a good job. Life is good. Is or being an adult is thinking you've got it or you can't function. Yeah. I think, too, we're, we look for a foundation, you know, and that what your beliefs are become your foundation so you can function in life. And so for some people to to think something different, it's a little unsettling in their foundation. Mm -hmm. I would guess in this room, we're, we're all shaking that foundation or we wouldn't be here. But um, yeah, for a lot of people, it's their foundation. Yeah. A few years ago, I was <clears throat> praying and pondering about an issue and, and 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 I was asking the Lord, you know, what it, what is it that you want me to sacrifice? And He said, 
I want you to sacrifice everything you think you know. And I think that's a lot of, you know, where we cast judgment and, and things like that is we think we know something. And in the internal scheme of things, we know virtually nothing. Yeah, so our knowledge is perhaps dividing us. You know, lack of. Our lack of knowledge. The, the knowledge we think we have, right? <laughs> I came across something really interesting as I was studying out this topic. Divide, the word divide comes from the Latin root vidir, which means to separate. Okay, that makes sense. Do you know another word that comes from the Latin root vidir? Is widow. Because she's been separated. Yes, she's been separate. The, she's been separated from her spouse. So when we think about being divided from the Lord, we are widowing ourselves. We are not allowing that marriage feast to happen. <clears throat> Interesting bridegroom being connection. Yeah. Yeah. So are we the bride or are we the widow? Mm -hmm. And then doesn't that describe the ten virgins? Absolutely. So I don't know about you guys, but um, I've read and studied the answer to prayer for covenant a lot in the last, what, five years? How long has it been? Five years? It's been, a, it's been a long time, yeah. And we even have a giant poster in our house that has all the things that, you know, it tells us that we're supposed to do. And I look at that every day and it's overwhelming. And I think. But there's just you that has to do, you have to change you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Go ahead, Kathy. I think one of the hardest things for me coming out of the LDS church is I had been so indoctrinated to think everything that we thought was right in these little cubicle and everything else was wrong. And we were trained to think that way and to believe that that was the truth and that's what the Lord wanted us to do. And now to have that totally gone and no parameters and everybody's right and everybody has some truth that we can gain from yeah. the whole world has changed mm -hmm. and it's just it's like the sun comes it's just it's awesome beautiful yeah <clears throat> we've been taught repeatedly that the influences we have in our society come from babylon come from what babylon babylon, yeah. babylon is one of competition one of judgment, one of upmanship, one of upmanship. However, we know that in order to accomplish what is indicated in uh, TNC 157 is a total change of society. And so it's, a, it's almost an abandonment of everything that we've been taught as we're growing up. And so within society today, the idea of being selfish, the idea of I'm important, the me, is something that we have to stare in the face to be able to actually see those changes that are going to be coming to us. So I don't know if you guys have had this a similar experience to this, but um, you know I've been I've been reading the answer to prayer for covenant. I've been trying really hard to be a better person really hard and I remember when I was sitting um, at Aravada Springs freezing my butt off <laughs> listening to Denver give the religion of the father's talk and you know a big part of that talk you'll remember he read through all of the things that we're supposed to be doing from the answer to prayer for covenant and as he was reading them I was just feeling worse and worse and worse because I know that I am failing at all of those things. And I had a moment sitting there feeling smaller and smaller and smaller 
where I reached out to heaven and said, I can't do it, God. I'll never be able to do it. I've tried. I've tried. And there are people that I am divided from. And I just can't. I, I just don't. I just can't. I, I never am going to be good enough. And in that moment, something happened to me. And I heard the words, yes, you can because I will help you. And all of a sudden, I was filled with this immense love for these people that I have felt divided from. That is what charity is. I think that there's a certain amount that we have, there are steps that we have to go through. There are things that we have to do. We have to be working towards charity. We have to be trying to do these things and be a better person. But ultimately, charity comes from where? It's a gift. It's a gift. Have you guys spent much time in the glossary? Okay. Favorite place? Would you guys like to read charity? in the glossary together. Book of Mormon says it's a gift. Absolutely. It's not exactly short. It's not exactly short. Let's just read part of it. Let's start with the first paragraph. Who's a good reader? Who wants to read? Awesome. Thanks, Kathy. The Apostle Paul elevated charity and pure love of Christ to such high importance that salvation itself depends upon a person's charity. It is through grace that one obtains charity. It is through charity that one can bless others. One cannot bless anyone or hold priesthood designed to bless, not curse, unless they have charity. This is never given unless the recipient is willing to do the things he would rather not, thereby offering himself as a sacrifice to God. No one is trusted by God to hold this honor unless he will subordinate his will to the will of the Father. Charity cannot be manufactured, but only bestowed. And Moroni directs us to pray unto the Father with all the energy of the heart, that ye may be filled with this love which he hath bestowed upon all who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ. So, Char you want me to go on? No, let's stop okay. for a second. It's through grace. The charity comes it is bestowed upon you so when we're told that we need to become of one heart and regard one another with charity how do we do that how do we actually do that i think it has to do with trying to see others the way god sees them with a different kind of perspective a different view i'm sorry louder we she hear. said it's it's looking and trying to see other people the way God sees them. Go ahead, Marilyn. I think the key was at the very beginning where you said we're divided from each other, but we're divided from God. And, you know, going back to the widow, and Christ always uses the bridegroom. It's that marriage. So you're not a widow if you're married to him using that, you know, uh, analogy so I think that's the key it's, it's our relationship with God and then he bestows those gifts and he helps to clear out the dross because we can try we've all tried and tried and tried and tried but it's when God steps in and we allow him to <clears throat> do his work then it becomes almost natural mm -hmm. and and he's the one who truly makes us, you know, helps us to become like him. I don't think we can do it on our own. I really don't. Um, so, anyway. Has anybody done it on their own? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not supposed to. Has anyone done it? I mean. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. Well, for a moment. A um, number of years ago, we had a situation where we um, at, uh, we're at odds with somebody, and it wasn't our fault. 
Um, and at the time, I was working on that concept of seeing others as Christ sees them. And, um, that, well, to make a long story short, um, I was, at the time I was in a bishopric, and this man with whom we had had a disagreement came in, and I was overcome by an overwhelming love for this person. And for that moment, I had charity. How long did you hold on to it? Well, um, you did pretty good. I, I had a harder time. I, I, I had a harder time for, for a while, but it, it, it changed the way I looked at him. Yeah. You know, even though we were at, at odds about a particular thing, um, I still saw him as my brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wasn't my best friend, but, you know, I, it, was, it was a different... I treated him differently. We're gonna to go to Bob first. Um, one of the things we learned in the temple, if you've been there, was we came here to gain experience. And that was a key element. We had to experience good and bad so we could make, learn to make choices. Everybody here has different levels of experience, different experiential paths, it, we're different. We're at different places. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. And when we finally go home, whatever we came together, we either did or didn't, and that's the way it is. And it's okay. Well, with that experience, it was the husband and wife and us. But what was interesting is my husband counseled me to, you know, when I had a little harder time, but as we treated them the same as we always had before, they were perplexed because they were still angry and we didn't change how we treated them. So it's interesting when you take on that role too is they didn't know what to do with us still loving them and being okay, whatever. Um, and it, it slowly watched them change a little. So I think part of that too is if we can give that charity, even for a moment or in spurts, however, you know, People aren't sure what to do with it sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's important that we <coughs> ask the Lord for that gift and let people see that gift. And hopefully, you know, and a big part for me is repentance and gratitude. Gratitude has a high vibrational energy. And if we can be thankful, I think that also helps us get to a place where we can do what you did. Oh my goodness. Um, I can't do this, Lord, I'm grateful for the atonement, and that's the only way that we're going to get there. And I think then that gift is given to us, hopefully, more and more and more until eventually it becomes who we are, which is the goal, I think, for all of us. Yeah, so we're gonna go back here to Cindy, and then it's Cindy, right? Yeah. And then I wanna ask a question. I was just gonna say pretty much the same thing Janine just said, but I love the way Moroni put it, and he said, um, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, pray to the Father with all the energy of heart that ye may be filled with this love, which he hath bestowed upon all who are true followers of Jesus Christ, um, that we may become the sons of God, that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, that we may have this hope, that we may be purified, even as he is pure. Amen. So it's something that we have to desire more than anything else and pray for it with all the energy of our hearts so that gift can be bestowed upon us because like you said i can't do it yeah yeah it's interesting when i had that experience and i've had this happen a few times i've never been able to hold on to it indefinitely right because then you'd be done i'm not there yet <laughs> right um, but you know, that that time, that experience, I held on to it for months and months and months. I was even able to go travel with these people that I had been divided from. I mean, it it really took really hard for a while. Um, just with sharing these experiences, there was once uh, a few years ago I 
came home early from an LDS mission and life fell apart because people didn't know that I was part of this. Um, <laughs> and so, and I was praying, like when I started my mission, charity was one of the first things we brought up and so I was studying it for months and I was praying for it like, yeah, with all the energy of your heart, like I was praying every single day and, and I was having such a hard time because so I was like, I have to teach people about church. I'm here, and I don't want to be here, and I was reading the 10th talk in the bathroom. <laughs> like, it was, it was a good time. So I was having, yeah, I was having a really hard time, but when it was time for me to go home, um, and life fell apart around me, I was so, I, in that moment, like, I was bestowed charity, and it was, it was so interesting to, like, to be with my parents, who were having a really hard time with me coming home, and to be with other people, and just, like they're like they're having a really hard time and I'm just calm and I'm like okay no I understand like I see where you're coming from I am sorry that this is happening like I'm really sorry and I'm and just feeling that sorrow because I know yeah I know their heart like I know why they're having such a hard time but I know that I'm still doing what God wanted me to do and so and then with holding on to it I was able to hold on to it throughout the experience which was again it was surreal because I'm like wow this is this is God this is not me <laughs> like this is not how I would normally handle this situation but then I, over the couple of months and talking to other people and being like oh my gosh your parents would treat you like that like your your family would do this and other people would do this and I suddenly started to let that in and I'm like you're right my mom shouldn't have done that and my dad shouldn't and like, my family and and then and I started to have a hard time with like God, why would you put me through this experience? And so instead of like at first it was this sense of gratitude and contentment and peace, and over time letting that all go and being angry and letting my environment uh, control what I was feeling, it was yeah. It's like God gives us this beautiful gift, mm -hmm. and then we give it back. Yeah, like I'm done. Marcus. Um, I think charity is just like an overwhelming feeling. I don't know if I can take it all the time. You know? Like, I just, yeah. this ironic thing, I was reading Denver Snuffer, the second time I heard the chapter on charity, and it was like late night during the winter, like, uh, fasted into the spring, you know. Um, it was right after uh, like a snowstorm. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning. My family, was, I'm like an ADHD, or I like to stay up and read. So I went downstairs, and I was getting a snack, and then I noticed there's this car at a stop sign just sitting there. And I'm like, that's interesting. So I stuck around and watched a little bit longer. And finally the car moved, but then it sputtered out again right in front of my house. And I was thinking, is this a chance for charity? And I and I was thinking like that, that quote, charity doing things you'd rather not. I thought I was gonna have to go out and help push this car up the street or something. So I put my boots on and the jacket. And I'm very emotional, sorry. But I went out there and all she needed was a little gas. And that was so easy. I had a gas can for, you know, the lawnmower. And I gave it to her and she took off. I never saw her again. But just the overwhelming feeling after that, like, it was so consuming. Like, I started crying. And I don't know if I could take that. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> yeah. I think we become more used to it, though, as we experience those things. So I want to think, let's think now about charity more specifically within the group, within our family today. This is our family. Let's think about charity within our family. Number one, how do you be of one heart when you don't even, this is what Jeff said, you have to, what did you say, you have to know each other to be able to? Well, we have to know each other and know their heart. You have to know somebody's heart before you can be of one heart. So we have to know each other, right? Who do you not know in this room? <laughs> you don't know you. That's powerful, Robert. When we have fellowship at our house, we always eat. And at Kyle's, we always eat. Because, because he loves you. And we love you. And we love you. When you share food with each other, you talk to each other, and it's not, oh yeah, I got a ticket last week, or oh yeah, I did it, and that. No, it's like, no, my kids are having a hard time, what do you think? Or my dog can't, you know, somebody shot my dog, you know, I can't handle that. 
you know, and when we talk to each other, we get to know each other. It's not go to church, shake his hand, take sacrament, go home. That was great. No, that's not knowing each other. No, but Kyle has a trailer that I can borrow any time as long as it's empty. It, it, it's great for me, okay? If, uh, step and fetch it. Who's <laughs> living their driveway? Wow. Okay, there was a hand over here and then Dustin. Oh, I, I'm sorry, but I kind of have a problem with it, what you just said. Okay. And that is, um, I don't think you have to know someone's heart. To have to know someone's heart. Correct. Okay. I, I had an experience when I was caring for my aging mom in the hospital, and I was just holding her hand, and she was watching TV, and all of a sudden, this overwhelming love came over me, which I consider charity, and everything that my mom had ever done to me, anything, was gone. It was wiped out. I totally had 100% love for her. And I still, she passed away, but I still have that. It's never gone for her. Mm -hmm. But that made me realize something, and that is I only have that for one person. There's everybody in this whole room. Why don't we have it for them? And so that's something that, like, you know, we have to pray for to give. But I Absolutely. don't have to know everybody. It's a plus if you do. Absolutely. We're going to pursue this, but first we're going to go to Dustin. I might defer after that statement because that, like, I think Very the problem, <laughs> I think the problem here is understanding, like, yes, I don't know all of you and I, I get the idea of, like, I, is that what's being asked of me? Is that what I need to do? Do I need to get to know all of you in order to be charitable and hence the deferred? We're gonna we're gonna pursue this. Yeah. Right. So, uh, uh, words are hard for us because you know you use one word and it means this to me, but it, it means something else. Mm -hmm. And some of us aren't very good with words, so we really struggle. But <laughs> so I'm kind of an engineer type, and uh, so just some background. My wife Wendy had a brain aneurysm about a year ago. And so we've been relearning how to do everything together. And so I've got a really different view of how a person's brain works as it rewires and relearns everything. Like, it's like I got a really big child with me, in a way. I really love her. Uh, so. I walk like a toddler. <laughs> yes, and she toddles. But I can see how everyone's brain just operates differently. And I can understand why people do really dumb or bizarre or weird things. It's, it's most of the time, it's just how they function. It's, what, it's the hardware and the software they've got currently. And what we're talking about right now is how do we change our software? And we could get downloads from God that came like to you. It's a, it was a free download and it just showed up, right? Like my friend yesterday, you know, his dad died and the funeral was yesterday. And, and we talked about what is this that just hammers you, just comes in, you're mentally fine, and then all of a sudden you have this physiological experience and you have this great emotional trauma that your body experiences. And how do we even understand or communicate? Or There's a lot going on. So to my original comment is, I think if you want to serve someone, because a lot of people wanted to serve us, if you want to be efficient in serving someone, it really helps if you know them really good. Like, don't bring me hot peppers, I can't eat them, right? <laughs> but, uh, so, but you, we don't, I don't have to know everyone here to have charity for them. I just don't know them well yet, but I can have the, the software inside running that says, I can just appreciate some person where they're at, doing what they're doing, because they're most likely, they're doing, they're the, doing best. the best that their hardware and software allows. Now there's some evil people that are not in that category, so we'll just set them aside. We're not worried <laughs> about them today. Anyway, that's, that's my comment is, uh, I'm not sure we, we have to know each other to be charitable, but 
it really helps if you want to be efficient mm -hmm. and do what they really need yeah. in your acts of charity. It really helps to know the person. There was, Cindy, did you have another comment? Yeah, I just, um, I agree because um, we live in a place where we're so isolated that we, we fellowship online. And, you know, I ask God, why did you put me in this position? It's, I'm a social person, so it's been really tough. And I am so grateful to be here around people of like mine that I know are searching for the same thing I'm searching for. And so I feel a great love for all of you. Yep. And I don't know hardly anybody in this room, but I know that we all want the same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, God's gifted me with that because of the situation that I'm in. And I'm so grateful for that. And I know I could go up and hug any one of you and you would reciprocate. So I'm, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I wanted to touch on trauma a little bit because I think that's one of the key elements that divides us. And trauma is something that's individual to each of us. You can take the exact same experience as someone can, it's a life-altering, shattering trauma to them. Another person could say, oh, that's just Tuesday. And somebody else could say, I missed the party. And it's the same exact experience. So our trauma is our issue, how we respond to what happens to us. And we have to figure out how to let go of the disappointment, the hurt, etc., before we can finish letting go and moving into this other space we're trying to get to. The self-awareness, the mindfulness, the stuff that Stephanie's been talking about. Cami, and then back here. So I find one, uh, for me, one of the questions that helps me get to know people and, and to ask the questions necessary to have charity is how does this situation, or how does the world look through their eyes? Because a lot of times I get so locked into my own way of thinking, they're just crazy, mm -hmm. you know? They're just weird. But I've learned that if I ask that question, it gets me into the other questions where I can start seeing the world through their eyes, and I may not agree with them still, but it makes sense to them and the way they built things out, and now I can relate to them better because I'm not in my head, I could, I'm still not in their head, but you know, I'm, I'm more... At least there's some understanding there. Right, right. I'm, I'm working on seeing it their way. Yeah. Back here. I don't know who you are. Oh, I'm Angela. Angela. So, um, I don't know if I'm going to make still to take too much time, but just really quickly, I thought... Louder and please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was thinking, you know, when, when she was saying uh, about sufficient and the Lord is talking to all of us, you know? I can tell you things he's telling me, and all of you can say that too, because when you're seeking him, he's gonna give you something. So I just wanted to share three little things he gave me that have helped me so much with the quest to care and love and not to judge and just to get down off your pride and be somebody that can do this that the Lord is asking us to do. And he said, you don't have to be right. You don't have to be right. Because guess what? You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Number two was, you don't have to be bothered by anything that anybody's doing. Why should you? That causes problems. I don't have to be right. I don't have to be bothered. And I can treat people the way I want to be treated. And that helped me a lot, so... Beautiful, thank you. Anybody over here? I'll oh, share something with you. What's helped me understand? Louder. Bernard, you're quiet. What you have to stand up and talk loud. Well. <laughs> How serious is to choose love instead of fear? Because there are only two powers, love and fear. It's pride, resentment, hostility, enmity. It's under the umbrella of fear. There are two scriptures. One is from um, Messiah, chapter 1, verse 14, and I will read only partially. It's about Christ. King Benjamin is teaching when Christ will come to the earth, 
he will heal all kind of sicknesses. And then he's saying very interesting thing. And he shall cast out devils or the evil spirits which dwells in the hearts of the children of men. And I want to emphasize the spirit. What is the spirit? We were taught in early church that the shape of body, spirit or mind of God or of the devil. So you have either mind, which is thoughts in your heart, which control your behavior. Because on opposite of that is a scripture from Force Nephi, uh, when uh, the love of God will in the hearts of men, that was the most beautiful people, whatever I'm paraphrasing, it's just nothing better than to have the mind of God in your heart, which is love. But the serious is that we have thoughts, negative, judgmental, thoughts in our heart. We have devil in our heart. It shakes with me. I don't want to have devil. It's <laughs> mine. Uh, my heart. Yes. <coughs> you get the thoughts, but once you let them enter to your heart, it means you take offense, yes? And then your behavior. And you are goofy, you are funny to everybody because of are You are upset, it's no big deal. But you're thinking it's end of the world. That's how devil enter to our hearts. You persuade us that something is not right. I realize the battle is not with people. The battle is in my head with thoughts. I have to choose between, listen, devil or the Lord. It's so simple. But it's a mental exertion from morning to night and from night to morning. Changing my reality is required to change my personality. Changing my personality requires to change my behavior. It means I need to work on the, I would say, habits. Yes. Uh, we act like, uh, how do we say, we are puppets. I'm sorry, we are responding to everything, same thing. Why? Because in past, the, the thoughts, yeah, the thoughts is language of the part of the brain. And feelings are the language of your body. You see situation and recall that that is the past. We have daily about 70, 80,000 of songs. Guess what? They are same every day. And so we live past. We are constantly living in past and nothing changing. And so we need to check on our thoughts, change our thoughts and it change our future. It's influence our health, our relationship, our destiny, but it's mental exertion. Nothing is for free. So why we talk about the charity, it's a gift. And when you have a gift of Christ, it's the mind inside of you. It will change your thinking, it change your speaking, it change your behavior. Guess what? You will be persecuted like him. For love. Are you kidding me? Bernard has, Bernard has studied this subject for years. And if you want an in-depth, <laughs> go camping with Bernard. You will, he, has, he is good. He has a lot to say about that. Thank you, Bernard. Love that. We're going to go back there and then up here. And then, Bob, you get one more and then you're cut off, dude. <laughs> yeah, so to address, address your question with charity within the movement, I'm relatively new within the past year. I'm like the nice young lady over here who, who would love to have more experiences with, with, with folks with you know here. So I, I, that's why I came, and that's what drew me here this morning. Uh, but most of my experiences with charity, just interpersonally within my own circle, and you know, sure I have my moments after you know sincere pleadings to have like that gift that'll come that lasts. And that, as we say, for me it doesn't last that long. Most of the times I'm white knuckling it through it, and I'm pretty good at that. I'm pretty decent, but oftentimes I'm pleading with the Lord, like, Lord, I'm looking for an exemption on that, like, 70 times 7. Like, I'm past, I'm well past <laughs> 490 <laughs> times, and I keep thinking, I need that endowment. I need that charity, and sure, if I have to fake it till I make it, I'm going to keep doing it like like, like it says in Moroni, um, but having that love, and, it, you know, some days are better than others, but seeking that, that love, 
uh, from the Lord is really the only way. <coughs> I often think, you know what, am I going to get excluded from getting invited to go to Zion just because it's not always there? That's kind of my fear, and that's what I, I think about. So. No. Yeah, I'll just say no. <laughs> go ahead. I, I get a little nervous when I talk, so I apologize. That's okay. I don't usually speak. But what she said back there is, is probably real pertinent to this group. You know, we're, we've all been through a lot. And, and what you said when you said you expressed your feelings to Heavenly Father when you felt like you couldn't measure up. And we all feel that way. We all feel like we we, we fall short. And you know, Denver does a great job of presenting to us how we all need to overcome, and it's a personal thing. And what, what she's saying as being part of the movement, you're looking at a group of people that are trying hard to do the right things, to not be divided. And, you know, we're talking about charity and we're talking about those things that will help us. At the same time, it's a trust between all of us. It's a trust that you're not going to try to take advantage of me and I'm not going to try to take advantage of you. And that's where that division comes in. It's learning how not to, to do that, to get rid of that pride or whatever causes us to think we're being short-circuited or, or not given our just. We, we have to learn not to expect it or have that uh, justice always to us, that pride that enters in. And I'm not verbalizing it very well. But, but, but. I think you're doing great. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I think it's that fear that Bernard was talking about. We have this fear of trusting people. Yeah, C.S. Lewis does a great job in his doodles in presenting mere Christianity and talking specifically about the moral compass. And that's, that's really what we're searching for. And we're, we're searching for, when, when we look at it, my, my whole, my whole life, I've sought for charity. And yeah, at different times I've felt that love, but there's so much in me that I have to overcome. It's it's that giving of yourself. It's that not worrying about and, and I think she verbalized it in the three things that she said that she does. Those are great tools that you use to to incorporate not trying to to get that treat me better you know you got to get that out of our system we have to somehow eliminate that and and just serve and serve when we when we say just serve it's not just about cooking a meal for somebody or something like that it's putting other people first without looking for that re uh, reciprocation I'll stop there, but well, thanks, hope Jim. you understand where I'm coming from. Bob, make it a good one. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I think something we all ought to recognize is that as we deal with one another, we're going to take advantage of one another. It's going to happen. Now, there's several ways of looking at it. One is it's unintentional and you work it out. Another is it's part of a negotiated arrangement. We have different strengths and we're trading. We're each taking advantage of something and mm -hmm. trading back and forth. Another is somebody's definitely just trying to take advantage of it. At this point, you got two options. You can put them on the FBI's most wanted list and go down the path of hate, etc. Or you can just simply say, well, let's not participate in that anymore and we'll just write off the damage I've already received. That's kind of a wrap. So if you return good for evil, you will cleanse yourself and know the joy of your master. So then the question is, can you, can somebody be divided from you and you not divided from them? Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> Children. Yes. Because, I mean, it says we're divided from the Lord. So, Is the Lord divided from us? So, no. no. Time out, time out. If you go back to the very beginning, he says there's there's people among you who are, are uh, how does it word it, are doing well and get along and are patient and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then there's those that are not so I'm going to the, this word wordage that we're reading he's treating us all as one mm -hmm. although there's a lot of people that are doing pretty good in a lot of areas so we, I, I'm not sure we want to say like we all suck on everything right <laughs> right no we we're all good there. at some things and we're all bad at some right. things okay a lot yeah. of something yeah, there were a couple hands back here. Yeah. Well, in the covenant, within these few verses surrounding, we're promised He will heal us. He will bring us to understanding. He will make us with one heart. And I'm not looking for the how because we were told it's not pixie dust. Right. right. We were told it isn't pixie dust. And in the repentance lecture that I just recently listened to, he says, Go, if you want to repent, we obviously, these things are things within ourselves, we all have our own, that you can't overcome. You've tried to white knuckle it your whole life. And we've been told, go relieve the suffering. And in verse um, 50 of the covenant, he gives us like, so my son's a dancer. He does 18 hours a week of stuff that doesn't look like dancing. And strength training so that he can lift the person when he gets on stage, right? And the Lord is saying, look, I have some strength training. And it goes back to that original Christian, good person definition of charity. And he says, forgive, be tender, pursue judgment, bless the oppressed, care for the orphan, and uplift the widow. And I think anyone who has any Christian sentiments, that's automatic. That's not something you have to, gosh, yes, I have to you know, there's an orphan, there's, you know, like, your heart automatically bleeds for those people in those situations. And I look at that, that's like, if you're in the habit of putting yourself in those situations, you become, we, uh, I don't know, Jim. Yeah, just, just this whole process is strengthening yourself so that you, when you walk into something that's personally really tough, you're in the habit of looking at someone in the best light you can yeah. and just assuming that they're doing the best they can. And Interesting that you would bring up this uplift minutes, the widow, minutes. 10 minutes, uplift the widow in her need. Okay, we talked about the fact that divide and widow come from the same root. Latin root, right? So uplifting the widow in her need, if we look at that in a broader sense, that's anybody who's divided from us. Go uplift the person who feels like they're divided from you. There was a hand back here. Yes. I have been hesitant to speak. I don't want, this is not comfortable. I'm still new. Then thank you. <laughs> Just a couple of thoughts. In my experience, I'm recognizing we process life differently. It's been expressed. In processing life differently, it's really hard in relating. Um, it's most difficult for me to relate with a person when my heart is charitable towards the person and the person tends to be disputing and contentious no matter what my choice is. That has been very harmful to me through my life. That has been a an effort with the heavens to overcome with them because it has been so harmful to me. I can choose to be a peacemaker and choose to be charitable. We all injure each other. We've all been injured. But my challenge has been when the harm has come here and resides and sits and festers and I cannot. I'm on my knees. I'm pleading. I will respond like Janine and, and Jeff mm -hmm. were talking. I had an experience where God, I was pleading for his love because I had, I, it was an abusive situation towards me and I was revealed his love for her. Um, again, that is the dynamic of charity that I am pleading for because I do not want to harbor the harm. It's 
all it's doing is hurting ourselves. Right. Um, one of the things I've asked from the heavens, and they will answer, is what lack I yet? Mm -hmm. Because they will every, answer. Every one of us are re interrelating with each other from where our hearts are. We are only responsible for our own heart. And that has been the teaching and the learning in my life with regards to charity. And I just throw it out there for Absolutely. whatever it is. Beautiful. Okay. Eight, eight minutes. Kyle had one. Uh, I found that, that growing up in the LDS church that I believe that my experience in a big way was we, we judge everyone in the church saying that we're right, you're wrong. Isn't it unfortunate that you don't have the truth that we have? And so we judge them. And so I kind of studied that and looked at it for a while in the scripture, and I, I was going to look for it, but... Um, the Lord teaches us the way to judge, and if we don't judge, we don't divide ourselves. So he says that if for whatsoever thing persuadeth man to do good, to believe in Christ, and to praise him, it is sent forth by the power and gift of God. But whatsoever thing persuadeth man to do evil, and to believe not in Christ, and to die, deny him, is sent forth by the power and gift of the devil. So now that you know the way that you may judge, see that you do not judge wrongfully. And then he says, for with that same judgment which ye judge, ye shall be judged. Mm -hmm. So I find that if you take that to a level that when something happens and you find yourself in judgment, who is dividing themselves from another? You are by your judgment saying, Oh, too bad you don't understand. Oh, you don't have it right. Too bad you don't know what I know, whatever. And we divide by judging. And I know that I've been working on that so that I don't judge others because the Lord said, Man, you don't get to judge. Only he gets to judge. So every time I judge, I am dividing myself not only from God, but from the person I'm judging. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's a, a very important part of it because... When we can love, like uh, the Pishnaks have said, that when we love and don't buy into the fear, we can just love them. We don't have to judge them. Yeah. Okay, we have five minutes left. Everybody who wanted to still make a comment, raise your hand, and let's see how many comments we still have. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, we're going to go with Mickey, and then we're going to go over here to Angie, and then we'll see where we're at. This won't take long, but... Uh, we've been given all the information we need on the subject in a few short words. He wants a broken heart and a contrite spirit. If you have a broken heart, you're not going to try to take advantage of your neighbor in the, in the uh, trade or whatever it is. If you have a contrite spirit that, that's humble, that's teachable, then you learn from other people. You look at somebody and say, well, I wouldn't have done it that way, but maybe that's learn from what they did do. And I think if we become as a little child, we will become teachable. And so a lot of this stuff goes away just by slowing your brain down a little bit and watching instead of opening your mouth and talking. Angie. I'm going to stand because I'm one of those people that has a softer voice. Um, but today is, uh, this is my husband Joseph. And we came to this group in a little bit of a different way because we were reading other records that have been brought onto this earth. And I don't know how many of you guys know about them, but they're pretty spectacular. And the verse in the covenant that says that this is just but a beginning of the records that will be sent forth. So my husband and I found a, a record called the Nimenhal record. Has anyone heard of that? Yeah. So we, we started reading that one first. And then we started sharing it with people in our ward because we're of the LDS faith, and we got, we then we found the Book of Remembrance. Has anyone heard of the Book of Remembrance? So that is about the brother of Jared and his vision that he saw when he, the, the, he touched the stone with his finger, and basically it counts 24 communities that have lived since Adam all the way to the future, the community. So if you haven't had an opportunity to read those, I would strongly recommend it because it's just like, like, I mean, it just takes everything even to the next level about our, the fathers. You know, Denver loves to talk about the fathers. 
So anyways, what I wanted to say is that, you know, we, we started getting reprimanded, and so we had our temple recommend strip because we were sharing these records, and, um, and then oh, our, just me. our callings <laughs> taken away. Um, and so, Congratulations. <laughs> but through it all, I kept looking at my bishop as he was counseling us and telling us we were poor whore no, with, with love, because I understand that he just doesn't understand, yeah. and that's okay. Yep. Because I feel so strongly about from the spirit that has told me of the truth and of the things that the Lord has allowed us to receive now at this particular period of time. Because it hasn't always been, and now it is. And so I'm grateful for everything that I've learned from the church because it taught me how to receive inspiration and revelation, and it's, taught, it's brought me very close to the Holy Ghost. And so those are all good things. And it's just now, it's a, it's a, a time where I can add. And so I really, my husband and I, we just got baptized in March. And that was a very special experience. We were able to share the record with one of my best friends, and the, these two records. And we've actually formulated a strong group, you know, because she shared it with her friend. And it's amazing how we start, we can start combining because of these special things that we're feeling and we're sharing and we're understanding and the more that we just show love, the more people are curious. That's what we found. You know, my parents are very strong LDS. And, and when we share these things with them, they kind of give us that hazed over look, like, you know. But the more that I don't care, and I just say, it's okay. I understand it's hard, you know, because you haven't understood things that, you know. But my dad will always say, I don't know what you're saying is true, but like, I just know that you and Joe, I know you and Joe, and I know how you are, and you're very, you're always so kind and so charitable and so loving, and, and so he, he will, he will, anything I send him, he'll read it, and so that's pretty uh, powerful to me, yeah. yeah, and so anyways, I just wanted to share Thank a little you. bit about us. Thank you. Okay, um, I realized that we were supposed to start with a prayer today, this morning, to open up the whole day. We're, you're not going to have a prayer in every session, but I failed to do that. So let's close this session and open up the rest of the day with a prayer, if you guys are willing. Um, is there anybody who would be willing to give a prayer? <laughs>